Thank you to all of you who have been able to join us in person this evening for our Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And thank you to all of you who have joined us via Zoom and Facebook Live. We begin our Wednesday evening service uh, with a 10-minute meditation. So what we're going to do, we're going to be playing the God song, which is the mantra, God's the love that I am, that they'll play over and over again. And you have the option of either chanting along with it, or if you'd like to just keep your eyes closed and just let that float through your consciousness, keeping your attention on the chant. And what we try to do here is, you know, our minds are going to wander. It's just, you know, our minds wander off into the past, starts thinking, our minds start thinking about the future. And this is our opportunity to develop self-awareness, to notice when our minds have gone off track, and to cultivate a sense of observing without judgment. So if that voice of, you're a bad meditator, comes up, just notice that that's that judgmental critic. And then, very gently, bring your awareness back to the breath. So let's get started as we get nice and comfortable in our seats. You may want to just make sure you're sitting upright. If you lean forward a little bit, that takes a bit of pressure off the spine. Closing our eyes. And again, over and over again, we just hear the words, God's the love that I am.
And so gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings. It may help to just wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, shrug your shoulders. Let's take a nice deep collective breath together, breathing in. And as we breathe out, just open our eyes. So, once again, welcome to those of you that are here with us in person and to all of you who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. For those of you who joined us while we were in meditation, we're just so glad that you're here with us this evening. Let's begin our service, as we always do, with our opening chant, led by the fabulous, oh my God, I love your hair, <laughs> Tina Meeks. <laughs> Thank you, Tina and Sam. <laughs> oh, well, let's join together in prayer. Oh, just turning our attention inward once again. And boy, oh boy, yes, God is in this place, love is in this place, joy is in this place. Because God is everywhere. As we often say, to our children in our youth church, there is no spot where God is not. That that pure love and infinite intelligence and creativity of spirit is the vibration out of which all creation is created and it is that force, that power that animates everything in the universe, including each of us gathered for this service this evening. I absolutely know that God is unfolding, flowing, revealing itself through all that transpires throughout our service. Let's just be aware of that vibration of love that allows us to feel interconnected. That love that flows through all of those who are of service this evening. I know as always we are uplifted by spirit flowing through Sam and Tina, that the music touches our hearts. And I absolutely know that we hear the perfect message of the divine through our beloved Reverend Sidney. That Reverend Sidney has said yes, yes to God, yes to being that vessel through which we get to hear exactly what we need to hear tonight to have that experience of awakening, of discovering that presence at some deeper level 
and to experience its goodness more fully in our lives. And so I know that much healing and revealing occurs throughout our time together. And for this, I'm just so grateful, grateful to be together, grateful for that presence that is always in and around us. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing absolutely that our time is blessed and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Have you read the papers lately? Have you heard the news? Do you ever wonder if there's something you can do? Oh, oh, oh. be the change you want to see. Now's the time to let it be. Starting here and starting now. Trust your heart to show you how you can be the change if you want to see. Sydney. Anyone not know me yet? (laughs) I'm so glad to be here. 
Um, you know, this is the first day of autumn. Did you all feel the Christmas in the air? <laughs> Wasn't it lovely? I mean, we only had a high of what, 91, 93? It just makes me want to get out the hot chocolate, my sweaters. <laughs> We're also in the midst of the, I guess today is the autumnal equinox. And I've read different accounts. Some of the accounts say that this means that the, for a moment the earth is in perfect balance. Equal amount of dark, equal amount of light, equal amount of, of day and night. And, just, and then other people say, no, that's not so. And so my take on this is that we get to decide what it means to us. We get to choose. I know that the light is always present. I know that the light defines the darkness. And though it might seem that we look at our lives sometimes and think that all we have is a need, a need for something, a need for greater expression, a need for love, a need for, for wholeness, for a relationship, the truth is within each of us is the absolute perfect pattern for wholeness the absolute perfect pattern for wholeness. It is a spiritual blueprint. If you've never heard that before, just chew on that for a bit. That within each of us is a spiritual blueprint that is already perfect. That we are whole now. The thing is, we don't seem to know it. We don't seem to know it. So. There are those things that we go to that will bring us back to a, a focused knowing, a focused centering, a focused awareness about that. And as I was listening to Be The Change, I thought, you know, what's so powerful about that is that's actually not a change. That's actually who and what we are. So be the truth. Be your truth. Be the divine truth. You know, we respond to need. We respond to those areas in our lives where we get triggered or we're having issues. We have, and some of our issues are really big things. You know, they can really, really call to us. But that's the important thing to remember is that need is actually not a sign that you're doing something wrong or that you've messed it up somehow, that need is an invitation to go deeper and to discover the truth of your being. That need is an invitation to love, to ask the question, what is calling for love here? Is there an emergence in me for a dream or a possibility of whatever it is, be it relationship, employment, wealth, wholeness, any of those areas? that is longing to be loved into active, whole expression. So I'm talking tonight about this idea of that need and how we look at it and turn it into a seed in which we plant in that divine soil of our subconscious. Of, of, let's just say that it is that presence. You know, what we teach here all the time is that there is a law of cause and effect. That Jesus said it is done unto you as you believe, and we hear about karma, we hear about all of the stuff, the secret, remember when the secret came out a few years ago, and everyone acted like, whoa, that's some really, really new good stuff. And those of us who were in new thought went, it's really good, it's not new. It's not new. We've, we've all known this for actually, let's say, thousands of years. That there is a law of cause and effect that responds by corresponding, co-responding to the thoughts that we are holding within us. Now, what's interesting is we often will hold lots and lots of thoughts out of habit and not know that they, over time, begin to work on this law of cause and effect as if they were our beliefs, as if we really did believe that stuff. And that's what's really interesting because our lives, we start creating a lot of, hmm, um, um, crap. <laughs> we create stuff we don't want to claim. So I wanna talk about this idea of really interrogating what the need is and what it's calling for. 
How do we do that? And part of what that is, this idea is, is around faith, having the faith that whatever's being called for, that we can pay attention to it, that there's an answer there, that there's a response there, that something indeed is actually being born within us, and that we're worthy of it, and that it's possible, that the world won't take it away, that we won't mess it up. Whatever those ideas and those fears are, and we all have them to different degrees, there's this component of faith. Now, I love looking at faith because I have gone back and forth over the years about how to define faith, how to explain faith, how to teach about faith. And what I know is, I, I don't know. <laughs> faith is not a feeling and faith is not hope. I will tell you that. And actually, I do know deeply about what faith is. And so I want to give you a couple of examples and we're going to talk about how to apply that and really begin to become that space where, yeah, be the change, change to be the truth, to actually be that truth. So Charles Fillmore, who co-founded Unity with his wife Myrtle Fillmore, wrote this about faith, and it's a really, really good definition. He said faith was the perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to shape substance. Spiritual assurance, the power to do the seemingly impossible. It is a magnetic power that draws unto us our heart's desire from the invisible spiritual substance. Faith is a deep inner knowing that that which is sought is already ours for the taking. And I like to think of it this way. If there's a need that's showing up, there's a pain, there's a desire, there's a hunger, in my mind, that already is the seed. That's the announcement. That's the announcement that your good is at hand, that your good is present, that your good, that your desire, your dream, that idea, that, that spiritual blueprint about who you are is seeking to come into expression, is seeking to come into a form in a greater, grander, more magnificent way. And where we experience pain or neuroses around that is we deny it. We think that we, we can't have it for some reason, that, that some power out here might keep it from us, or we're not strong enough, good enough, old enough, whatever it is. Young, old, tall, short, I don't know. You know, we all have our, our reasons that we want to hold on to, our dramas about that. But it's not, faith is not about hope. It's not about superstition. It is about the perceiving power of the mind, which tells me that we need to work on our perceptions. We need to strengthen our perceptions. We need to strengthen our understanding of what that means. Ernest Holmes wrote this, faith is, and let me tell you a little bit about Ernest. So Ernest was this guy who many years ago, like others of his time, like Charles Fillmore, took these fabulous ideas of religion, of scientific thinking and science and what was going on in the world of metaphysics and physiology and began to see, he began to see that there were common lines, that there were some really common powerful ideas of wisdom that were really useful. And he wanted to correlate all of those, co-relate all of those so that we, those of us who are on this planet Earth, I'm on planet Sydney, could begin to use those principles in a productive, proactive way to have more peace, have more joy. He was not ever intending that science of mind, religious science, however you want to call it, new thought, became a vending machine for God or vending machine for good. That was not the intention. But that we could come to a place of greater wholeness by knowing who we are divine. So he wrote this, faith is a substance. Again, there's that word of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's right out of the Bible. And what he wrote after that is faith is a mental attitude. So inwardly embodied that the mind can no longer deny it. Do you ever have something that you are so wanting to do that you can no longer say no to that dream? You can no longer deny that this is something you want or this is something that's calling to you. He also says faith 
may be consciously generated. In spiritual terminology, faith means a belief in the presence of an invisible principle and law which directly and specifically responds to us. Now that's a lot of left brain mumble jumbo, right? What we want to know, really the truth, is that faith is substance. Faith is the substance. It is the announcement. It's the announcement, it's the declaration that there is something coming forth. This is, this is the fanfare. When we begin to have this idea that there's something greater, that means, yes, I'm here. Are you going to answer the door? I'm here for you. Come on. I'll, if, I, if you don't let me in this door, I'm going to get your attention somewhere else. I might tap you on the shoulder. I might give you that proverbial two by four upside the head, the spiritual two by four, which most of us ignore all of the little taps and get that big thing before we finally, God gets our attention and we go, oh, I could have had a V8. I'm supposed to be pursuing my dream. Pierre, if I can say this right, Teilhard de Chardin said, matter, oh God, I love this, matter is spirit moving slowly enough to be seen. Oh my God, isn't that mind blowing? Matter is spirit moving slowly enough to be seen. So the idea about faith is that we need to come into the spiritual realm in the spiritual realm's nature. Ernest Holmes wrote, as we come into the spiritual realm, which is a perfectly natural and normal realm, right? We have to come into it in its own nature. So that means we deliberately and consciously choose to be like spirit, to be that change, which is the change for us, but that which is within is divine, is perfect, and has already called your name. It already knows your name, it has already called your name. We have to choose to be like spirit. My favorite, favorite verse out of the Bible, and over time you'll hear me say it many times, it's Paul's epistle to the Corinthians, and it's verse 2, chapter 5, I think. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The advice is to be like Jesus, to be like that mind, to be like that spirit, to be that change, to be that transformed idea, to be like that without thinking in any reason God's going to strike you with lightning or anything else. This is what we are supposed to do. We come from pure spirit. We have to enter into it with its nature. So in other words, if you're intending to have sushi for dinner, you wouldn't go to Home Depot and then be shocked when you can't find any California rolls or edamame. Your mindset is about hardware. It's about Home Depot, right? It's wood. If you're going to see the LA Philharmonic or, or Lady Gaga in concert, you're not going to bring a briefcase of work from the office with you intending to get some stuff done while you're sitting in the audience, right? Although I have to say, I actually lived with a guy for a while that did that. I was playing at a jazz club, and he wasn't interested in jazz very much, so he thought, well, I, uh, I'll be there. She'll think that's fine. And there he sat, can you believe it, with the table, <laughs> briefcase on the table, pulling his work out. And I went, oh, this is what's fascinating about life, that the experiences we have, the relationships we have, they're all a reflection of our self-worth. They're all a reflection of our knowing of who we are as divine beings. All of them are showing us what we need to know, where we might need the shift. And for me, the shift was to know that I was worthy enough, valued enough, divine enough to be in a relationship that honored all of that, as I wanted to be in a relationship where I could honor all of that. So not surprisingly, eventually the relationship came apart, as it should, because the pain, right, the need to be seen, to be heard, to be acknowledged, is actually the seed of the idea saying, it's time for you. There's a readiness within you for wholeness, for acknowledgement, for being seen, for being known, for being honored and respected. So that pain, that pain is the path. Now, if you've ever, if you're a practitioner, if you ever worked with a practitioner, you know that this is, this is exactly the process, that we look at what the pain might be and we follow that to see 
what really is lying behind it. What's underneath that? What is the idea that might have created that pain? And what's the idea that actually wants to be experienced? In my thinking, it's about polarity. It's about polarities. Can we move from the polarity of the pain or the need over to the polarity of the spiritual truth? So we go from the pain, from the need, to the seed. And I wrote something kind of obnoxious about this. Our need can lead us to plant a seed or it can be the place we bleed. We choose. And I'll tell you what, we, we create a lot of drama around our need. We create a lot of drama. We get a lot of attention. And believe me, I'm really good at it. You can just ask my husband. So we have to look beyond the drama and realize that there's so much in our lives that we get to choose and we don't always remember that the energy and the attention that we are putting on that pain and on the need is preventing us from seeing what's really trying to be planted. Because we get so much, oh my gosh, energetic response. We get adrenaline. Oh my, adrenaline just kind of gets me going. It's like I feel like I'm doing something. If, I've can, if I can get cortisol and adrenaline going in my body, I am moving to the music. I'm, turns out that's just kind of like, you know, panic. That's more along the lines of trauma. That's not what we want to plant. When we enter into the spirit on spirit's terms, if we can have just a shred of willingness, just a touch of willingness to see ourselves as God sees us, as spirit sees us, to see ourselves as we truly are according to that spiritual blueprint, if we can just be slightly willing and that's all spirit needs, just a little opening to come in there. You know, the cracks, that's where the light gets in. If we can just crack open a little bit, then that light can get in there and we can, and that nurtures the seed, right? So that it can, can begin to grow. So remember, again, Charles Fillmore said, the perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to shape substance. And as Ernest Holmes said, we can consciously generate that. So how do we generate faith? Right? How do we generate that? Ernest Holmes taught us that if we have desires and we pray, we pray affirmatively, we have some specific ways that we teach that. It's not the only way to pray, by the way. There are as many ways to pray in the world as there are people in the world. But this is just a path that feels very um, congruent and harmonious for many of us that part of it is that we, pre we prepare for our dreams to come true. We prepare for what we call a demonstration, which is just a fancy word for, it. look, it's happening, okay? We prepare for it, and what does that mean? We become the vehicles, we become that place. Simple terms. Um, you're preparing yourself for your dreams to come true. It's that you're asking yourself if you would made space for your dreams to come true. Have you prepared your si yourself in your life to be that container for whatever that thing is? Let's play with this a little bit. If your need or your want is a loving, vibrant, romantic relationship, the need also tells you that you're done with being lonely, single, hurt, or whatever it is that's motiv motivating you to claim and to honor that desire for a relationship of a higher level. So the first question to ask yourself is, well, what do I really want? How do I want to feel? And that's the first journey along the polarity. If you can attract, if you can engage enough, engage yourself away from the drama of how bad it feels into what's possible about how good it feels inch by inch by inch along that polarity and finally leave this stuff behind about, God, he did this to me, she did this to me, I really need this to happen, it's never happened, I don't know, my mom did this to me, my dad did this to me, I don't know if I can ever have this. If we can just take one tiny step towards what I want to feel is peace. What I want to feel is love. What I want to feel is respect. What I want to feel is enthusiasm. What I want to feel is possibility. If we are willing to be willing to be willing to be willing, and sometimes you have to go 
eight generations of willing down the line in order to get yourself to just say, okay, it might be a possibility. And sometimes it's a matter of I am willing to be willing to think about being willing about thinking about being willing maybe later on I'll be willing. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Up. <laughs> so everything that we hold on to in, in passion, whether it's something that serves us or doesn't, right? becomes that which we attend to. We energize it. We give it lots of, of, well, we give it lots of energy. And that's what the universe, that's what the spiritual law begins to respond to. Because the universe only has one answer. It reflects what we, who we are, what we do, and how we feel. That, re, that answer always is yes. The answer is always yes. So I'm miserable. Yes. I just can't have a good relationship because of what my parents did to me. Yes. I know I'm never going to lose these 15 pounds that I put on during COVID. Yes. The universe only has one answer. Now, the thing is, it doesn't care whether you do it that way or I am worthy of love and wholeness. Yes. I am a delight in the world and I get to be healthy. Yes. I am worthy of a career that challenges me with people who love me and support me where there's humor and light and joy. Yes. That's the answer. That's the response. So when we create that possibility within our minds and begin to energize that with our imagination, with our feeling, then we move into that place where this end of the polarity no longer has a pull for us because we have moved into this part of the polarity, which is the truth about the wholeness of God and therefore the wholeness of you, 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 and me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, good. I love that word. <laughs> so what are we giving spiritual law to work with? What are we giving it to work with? Are we giving it the drama or are we giving it the love? Um, I hope so. <laughs> I want to tell you about preparing for your demonstration. Um, if you are a painter, for example, part of what we teach, what I like to teach, is this thing called active faith. How can you actively create a sense of faith about that which you wish to have happen? And it is that thing that Ernest Holmes taught about preparing the space. We prepare the space for that demonstration. How do we do that? Well, if you want to be a painter and nobody has hired you for a commission or that big mural you want to do, put a brush in your hand and go paint your bathroom. The law just says yes to what you're doing. And if you are painting, it doesn't care whether it's your bathroom or, or a new Mona Lisa. It says, yes, you are a painter. If your desire is to be a writer, and you haven't sold your screenplay or your script or whatever it is, start making grocery lists. Write, 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 write letters. Do that so that there is this mental equivalent that begins to grow within you of who you are as a writer. This is what we do. We cultivate faith. It's an active faith. I want to tell you a story about that. Years ago, it was about 1993, I had this real strong need to be performing and be recognized at a higher level of my craft as a musician, as a jazz pianist, as a keyboardist, as, as a composer and a conductor, and all of that. And I saw all of my peers getting these great gigs. You had great gigs. You were traveling around the world, and I was thinking, well, if Sam can do it, how come I can't do it? And I really, because I saw all of these friends of mine who were traveling and making great money and going to Europe. And I thought, okay, I know this. I know how to do this. I'm going to prepare for my demonstration. I'm going to take that need and turn it into a seed. And I began to work with that consciousness, growing that consciousness. I worked on my musical craft. I worked on it a lot. I got better as a musician. And I exponentially improved my, my understanding of technology because that's, that was the job. That's part of being a keyboard player. I 
thought, I really want to go to Europe. I really wanted to go to Europe. I had not gone, and everybody I knew had gone to Europe, and I didn't. I thought, I want to go, and I want to go on someone else's dime. <laughs> so I began to prepare for that. Prepare for that. I, Blockbuster was still around, so I went and got all of the travel videos I could find, Austria, Germany, France, Italy, all of them. Watched them a lot until I began to see myself in these places. I thought I would be very comfortable there. I could do this. Yeah, I could definitely do this. I went to, anybody remember Crown Books? There was one over on Pass Avenue. And I went there and I got cassette tapes <laughs> and some CDs of, so I could learn to speak German. I actually had a little bit of German from when I was in high school and junior high, but I thought I want to be a really strong uh, I want to be conversant so that I can ask, you know, wh where's the train? Where's the bathroom? Can I have more coffee? You know, anything like that. I, you know, how much is this? You know, I wanted to be able to shop. And so okay, let's talk reality, right? Retail therapy in German has got to be good. So I worked on that. I had this stuff in my car, and everywhere I went, I was listening to phrases, and I was work working on my German. I, I got new luggage. I renewed my passport. I did everything I possibly could to be prepared on every level and did all of the spiritual work as well. I did the spiritual work. I am worthy of the highest and the best for my life as a creative musician, as a professional musician. I am recognized, and I am paid abundantly or something like that. And it was in, in lots of meditation, daily practice. So one day, it was about the end of October, I get a phone call. And it's from one of my friends. And she says, hey, I'm putting together, and she was a musician, I'm putting together a tour of Japan. <laughs> huh? Now, Japan's fine. I'd actually been to Japan, but I thought, I want to go to Europe. But I didn't whine. I thought, the universe needs to hear my yes. I need to know I'm willing to say yes. Spiritual law needs to know I need to show willingness. So I said yes. It wasn't going to be a, like millions of dollar tour. It wasn't even thousands of dollar tour. But it was about eight or 10 days of being in Japan. And it was fun. The players were great. I came home. And the day I was home, when I finally got home, I was incredibly jet lagged and I was sound asleep and I missed when my phone rang. I woke up, saw that I had a message and it was a friend of mine, a guy named Dave. And he said, hey, Sydney, I just had to bail on a five week tour of Europe with Shirley MacLaine. Are you available to cover it? So I, of course, was. And because God always has a bigger idea, that tour started on December 26th and went through, well, it was three months long. And all over, those places that I had seen and imagined myself in, in Germany, in Austria, in, in Italy, in Paris. And because I had practiced, practiced being there, I was celebrating every moment. I was celebrating every moment because I knew I had grown this consciousness for this. And it was great. Now, holy cow, I was working with Shirley MacLaine and eight other incredible musicians. Do you remember Cubby O'Brien? There you go. Cubby O'Brien used to be on the Mickey, the Mickey Mouse Club, one of the best show drummers in the world and also one of the best tap dancers. He was Shirley's drummer. So, I mean, we had this amazing band. This experience was so much fun. And I came home, and I had enough money to buy my first house. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, God. God always has a bigger idea. I know. Isn't that a great story? So I want to tell you, you must be ready. Even if you don't really know what it is that you are to be ready for, I want to encourage you to interrogate those places in your consciousness and to begin to ask, what is that dream? What is that need that is now a seed that is calling me to come forth in a greater, more powerful way? What is that? Prepare the space of your own consciousness and show up in all of your wonderful and magnificent possibility. Your dreams are waiting for you to come true, not the other way around. Let's pray.
Oh, thank you. Okay. So I invite you to just turn within to that place where the soil of the divine, oh, is healthy, is whole, is perfect, is radiant and vital and robust and ready, ready to grow by means of you, by means of me, by means of all of us. And to know, to recognize that this one infinite presence and power which has created the mountains, the skies, the ocean, all of it, created us, has created me, has created each and every person in this room as a perfect divine expression, as a celebration, as its own seed of greatness and possibility. And I know for each of us that we are clear that we are not just here as examples of God or God adjacent, but that we truly are part of that one mind that knows, that lets this mind that was in Christ Jesus, Christ the teacher, the leader, our brother, be that mind which is in us and that we are connected with God, in God, as God, and with each other. For that one mind so embraces all of us for it truly is that sea of infinite possibility in which we all live, we all swim. Indeed, we all float easily, for we are that celebration of God. And I speak my word now for each of us, for each of us, that we are receptive and open to knowing what it is that that seed within us is calling us to do. We know that that unchangeable nature of spirit desires expression. It needs, it requires expression, and we are the vehicles, and we are prepared. We are the willing spaces, the available spaces. I speak my word for health, knowing that the wholeness of God is the truth of each of us. It cannot be denied. It will not be denied, for we are that wholeness of God in perfect expression. And how blessed to know that we are more than our jobs, that indeed, whether they show up as a job, as work, career, that that is the ministry of love that we have been called on to awaken, whether it's to do more there or to awaken into a greater possibility, that all of it simply tells us that God always has a greater idea, and you and I are that greater idea. I know for us that we are prosperous that we now engage in healthy, loving relationships, that there is wholeness revealed on every level. <sighs> and in this joy, this knowing, I invite everyone here to set your intention, set your own individual intention to know the truth for yourself and to have a revelation, to have an idea revealed to you. Breathe into that for just a moment. What is mine to know, spirit? What is mine to know? We know that God is at the center of all situations. That God is the center for everything for which we set our intentions. And that good is always being revealed. Together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's do that again. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. So we bless this church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues, temples, ashrams, mosques, whatever that form whatever that form of connection might be, knowing that there are so many paths to God because there are so many of us here and that all of us are here simply to bless and to walk each other home in that same sacred truth that there is one life, that life is God, that life is perfect, and that life is my life now. So in this, I am so grateful. I am so grateful knowing that we have recognized simply the true nature of God and therefore the nature of us. And in that 
gratitude, I release this word into the law of mind, knowing it is so. And together we say, amen. Thank you. Oh, I have all these notes up here. That was a lot of fantastic information. Want to hear it again? <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. Um, for those of you who are here, we have boxes in the foyer as you're exiting where you can drop off your donations. And for those of you watching online, uh, several ways that you can give. First is we'll be here in the church office for about 15 minutes after service. You can call in and give a donation over the phone via credit or debit card. You can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that allows you to make a one-time or set up recurring donations, or you can text the word give to 818-457-3419. Matters not which way you decide to give, we always say yes, <laughs> just like the law. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much for whatever way you choose to support us. And so with that, let's, those of you who are home, uh, doing it online, just feel that vibration of giving and sharing, and those of us who are here, if you want to hold your gifts to your heart, as we say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Tina and Sam, as always. Um, so want to begin as we wind our service down uh, by thanking everyone who's been of service this evening. Uh, let me start in uh, virtual land. Um, so I <laughs> want to say thank you so much, Melissa Allen, for uh, the support on Facebook Live and uh, for Zoom to Mark Kroll, who's our North Hollywood Church host, Lynn Romanowski, who is the Zoom host, and Ray Regan in Delaware, who's still part of the family uh, as our Zoom associate tonight. And here in the sanctuary, um, let me start in the back uh, to Luana. Thank you for being there to usher us in this evening. Yeah. <laughs> Adam. And uh, who's with Adam back there? <laughs> Colleen. Oh, Colleen, there you are. Colleen, thank you for, for being with us also this evening. So there's Adam uh, on lights and sound. So we can all look fabulous and sound fabulous. <laughs> thank you to Doreen. And is that Nikki that's with Doreen in, up there? I can't see very. Yeah, Nikki, OK. Uh, Brenda on camera too. Blair is always overseeing things technically here, so we can make sure we're staying connected with you. Ah, as for you, my beloved Tina, I was trying to think, you know, the first time I think I heard you sing at North Hollywood was probably over 25 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, what does that say about me, huh? <laughs> you were 12. <laughs> it was, I was amazed. <laughs> And Sam, just always, thank you, thank you. To our beloved, beloved Reverend Steve, was that an amazing message? Yes. <laughs> to our wonderful Gail, who's here holding vigil in person tonight, so we're getting back into the sanctuary, yes. Uh, did I miss anyone? Well, of course, to all of you for being here, just really, so nice to feel this energy in the room and to all of you who joined us virtually. Uh, just really, really thank you. So as far as Tina's inspirational music, go to iTunes. She has so much. Uh, this woman, I had to hunt her down for my um, ordination. I would not have my ordination until I could find Tina. And trust me, there's so much music that will inspire you. So iTunes, Tina Meeks. Donations, again, just a reminder, over the phone. We'll be here for about 15 minutes, 818-762-7566, nhcrs.org forward slash give, or texting 818-457-3419. Just text the word give to that number. And just a reminder, again, that if you're shopping on Amazon and you join Amazon Smile and designate Church of Religious Science North Hollywood as a recipient of charity. Um, every time you purchase something, we get uh, a donation. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service on Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, if you'd like prayer with a practitioner, please come to the front of the sanctuary, uh, and one of our practitioners will pray with you. Uh, you can email prayer requests. So please know this, uh, a lot of times I have people trying to reach us and say, you know, I, I'd like to put in a prayer request. Just uh, send it to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office and option four allows you to leave a voicemail message. We check those every evening and uh, those messages are sent out to our practitioners who will be praying uh, with, for or supporting you in prayer. Next week, we'll be back. Uh, so it'll be September 29th, and Reverend Sydney's topic is full frontal God. When we expand our understanding of God, we expand our own lives. Are you ready for exponential wholeness? Just say yes. Yeah, just like the universe, just say yes. <laughs> Reverend Sydney will be joined by yours truly, so we hope to see you there. Reminder that our youth church is open on Sundays for our 9.45 a.m. service, kids of all ages. 
uh, so from toddlers to uh, teens, please uh, feel free to, to bring your kids along and um, we'll have uh, the youth church open for the kids of different ages. Our grief support group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets this coming Sunday. And I just always like to remind people there are so many different kinds of losses that we experience in life. We tend to think of grief as when we've lost a loved one, but it could be the loss of you know some something that you just were very attached to in your life, a career, or whatever. And uh, Carol is really masterful at moving people through that. So that's at 1 p.m. on Zoom. The Essential Earnest Homes class with Reverend Sidney uh, starts on next Tuesday, the 28th, from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. That's on Zoom alone. And in this class, students gain a holistic awareness of Ernest Holmes' teachings and thoughts and come to see that many of their questions about applying the science of mind Teachings were addressed by our founder himself at one time or another. Cost is $245 if paid in full, $270 if you make two installments of $135 each. And um, if we don't have enough sign-ups, so we need a few more people signed up, we won't be proceeding. So if you're thinking about it, please, uh, you know, you're really seriously considering doing it, please sign up. We will notify those who have signed up if it doesn't move forward. But are we saying yes to it's going to move forward? I think so, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. Also, if it doesn't move forward this time, it will. It will, it will yeah, at the perfect right time, if not delay now. Delay is not a denial. That's right. A delay is not a denial, if you didn't hear that. <laughs> so um, it's not on here, but we need to remind people about your workshop is coming Saturday. So um, do you want to quickly stand up and, and tell people what your workshop's about? Sure. <laughs> so Brene Brown is very well known for her yeah, work of, gosh, you know, I forget <laughs> this every time. That's an affirmation. I don't forget that. I remember every time. Brene Brown is very well known for her work in helping people to cultivate authentic spiritual re relationships with themselves, right, with the divine full frontal God, really. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So this workshop, it's three hours. We will be looking at those stories that we have, the narratives we've created about situations in our lives or those needs, those pains. We are going to rumble about them, which means we, we start really questioning what is, the, what is the truth about that, and we do it with each other, and then we create a new story. And that is what transforms us and moves us into... Hmm. the greater knowing of ourselves as divine. So that's it. And that's going to be from 10? 10, 10 till 1. one. Bring a snack. Bring something to write. With. Bring a journal or a notebook because there's a lot of journaling that takes place and processing. It's really fun. It's really good. And what else do I want? It's Cost is youth, $30. In the youth church. We're yeah. doing it in there. Yeah. It's going to be in the youth church. I'm going to put this back on now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... That's this coming Saturday, yes. Um, so, and just a reminder, we're also still inviting people, if you have any desire to help be a host on Facebook Live, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's not nearly as technical as some of the other things we do here. So if that even calls you, please call our church office, let us know, and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, Zoom virtual patio continues before and after services, so you can stay connected with the congregation if you're not able to join us yet in person. And our Zoom meditation continues every morning, uh, from Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. We usually get on about 15 minutes before and visit. And uh, for any information on anything, like if you forgot the details about when is Rev. Sydney's workshop again, nhcrs.org for the information. So with that, thank you again for being with us this evening. We're going to invite uh, Reverend Sidney to come up and do our benediction, and then Tina will close us out with our chant. Thank you. So once again, just with this wonderful sense of completion, <sighs> fulfillment, and willingness, 
We turn within in that full, full-throated recognition that the infinite power and presence of God has brought us here, has blessed us, has lifted us, and indeed that intention to shift has been, has happened, has been addressed, has been anointed within us. And I know for us that as we move out into the world, we see the evidence of our faith. We see the evidence of that seed. We see the evidence of our shift as we become more and more willing and receptive to walk this path of love, of possibility, of God. So I bless everyone here knowing that we are that light that is God. We are that love that is God. And that as we move out into this world, <laughs> we are guided, we are guarded, and we are open-hearted. I know it is so. We let it be so, and together we say, Amen. Say, say, ah, ah, ah.